Welcome back to ML Miller Frights. This is ML Miller. So I did a little homework this week and I checked out the movie The Dig. It's a dramatic thriller from the Irish filmmaking brothers Andy and Ryan Tohill. The film was made in 2018 and it was written by Stuart Drennan and it starred Mo Dunford, Lorcan Cranich, Emily Tafe, Francis McGee, and Catherine Devlin. The main reason I checked out this film was because the Tohills have been hired by Fede Alvarez to direct the next chapter in the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. And I wanted to check out the Tohills style and see if they were up to the job to bringing back Leatherface in a big way. But before I talk about that, let's talk about The Dig a little bit. The Dig is a small story of two men. Sean, played by Lorcan Cranich, is obsessed with finding the body of his murdered daughter Neve whose body was never found after a rowdy night of drinking among friends. It also tells the tale of Ronan, played by Mo Dunford, who served 15 years in prison for the crime, yet was so drunk that night he doesn't remember what happened or where he buried her body. Neve's skin was found underneath Ronan's fingernails, and the two were seen arguing outside of the pub the night she disappeared. So that's enough for Ronan to get convicted. Years later, when Ronan returns home from prison, he finds Sean and his daughter, Roberta, played by Emily Tafe, digging holes in the swamp behind the house, attempting to find the body. Overwrought with guilt, Ronan pledges to find Neve's body and joins Sean in the excavation. The Dig is a deeply emotional story about dealing with loss, obsession, and overwhelming guilt. These are ugly feelings, and the Towhills illustrate them by depicting the dank, wet and dirty conditions with which these two men are digging through for pretty much the entire film. I felt exhausted and cold just watching this film as the Towhills were able to convey the freezing wet and murky landscape with washed out colors and actors that look like they are so covered in mud and grime that it would take a lifetime to wash it all off. This is not a feel-good film. No matter what the outcome, whether the body is found or not, no one is going to leave this story happy. Yet The Dig does a wonderful job in illustrating the humanity in these two characters who are at odds with one another, yet are dead set on achieving the same goal. It's an intimate character study with heavy emotions, making the entire film an endurance test for those who don't mind carrying those weighty feelings. The Towhills capture the cold, wet landscape and the dire feel of it all masterfully. The way they show the entire landscape covered in mud and darkness and the clouds above are gray and sooty, it just paints a bleak and morose atmosphere. The acting is exceptional. I hope to see Mo Dunford again in more films. He's a true talent, rugged and tough. Maybe he'll show up in a Texas Chainsaw Massacre. He's still able to convey a softer side though, kind of like Russell Crowe. Dunford has a lot of the same kinds of qualities that Crow has. You can tell he's not a man to be messed with, but he carries a lot behind his furrowed brow. The rest of the cast delivers the goods as well. No one is completely innocent or completely guilty in the dig, and it was refreshing to see these characters interact in human ways that don't clearly match up with purely good or evil, right or wrong. Even the constable, played by Francis McGee, shows a considerable amount of conflict here as he is spiteful towards Ronan, yet gentle and caring towards Roberta and Sean. It's nice to see these characters portrayed as realistic people with layers rather than simple symbols that have different stances on a particular subject or conflict. And that's the thing about the dig. It's all about the feelings. Not so much the right and wrong of the crime, but the myriad of emotions that happen after an impulsive and sudden act. It's all about regret and guilt. Every nerve in the dig is raw and blistered, so overcome by emotion that you feel the film is about to burst at any given moment. When the climax does come, I have some issues with the quote-unquote twist revelation that occurs at the end. It just felt a bit too conveniently revealed and wraps the film up in a manner that it's a bit too tidy compared to the sloppy landscape everything has been taking place in. And for such a filthy movie, I think it's a disservice to put that type of bow on the end. That's more of an issue I had with the script 
rather than the directing, but for the most part, it only stumbles the film for a few minutes before it gets back to its damp and weary stride. Still, in regards to raw emotion, the dig is going to wring it out of you, whether you're comfortable with it or not. While I wouldn't necessarily call it a horror film, it does deal with some very dark themes and is very morose and filled with all kinds of dark emotions. So it's not that far of a stretch for folks who like horror. I think if you don't mind a little bit of dramatic heft in your horror films, this is going to be a film that most horror fans won't mind checking out. All right, I've kept you guys in suspense long enough. The real important thing is, are the Toe Hills going to deliver a right and proper Texas Chainsaw Massacre film? They delivered a very simple story here with The Dig that relied on raw emotion to propel it from beginning to end. That's not necessarily a requirement for a TCM film, but some very fleshed out, lived in characters and a knowing hand at dealing out emotional scenes can be nothing but good for any film. Aside from the fact that everybody looks dirty and worn in, much like the cluttered and unkempt living situations of our favorite cannibal family, there's really nothing about The Dig that made me immediately think of Leatherface and his kin. The Dig is a carefully paced drama, whereas the new Texas Chainsaw Massacre should be a gas-powered mean machine. The Dig proved that the Toe Hills have what it takes to deliver a very good-looking and thematically dark film. These aren't unskilled or unproven directors. They have a good eye for visually captivating landscapes and make their actors feel well-worn and gritty. They are definitely directors with talent, and that's all I really wanted as part of this Texas Chainsaw Massacre reboot. Apart from the announcements of the Toe Hills' involvement as directors, there really hasn't been much else in regards to news about the upcoming Texas Chainsaw Massacre reboot. I hear that Leatherface will be taken care of by an older woman who keeps him placated with TV shows. That's far from the Sawyer family I was hoping for, and I hope we see some kind of Sawyer family reunion in the new movie. But time will tell. It appears Texas Chainsaw Massacre is in capable hands. With this being the Toe Hills mainstream debut, here's hoping they have what it takes to deliver something that will satisfy the rabid TCM fanbase, myself included. This is a big movie because we've been disappointed by the Texas Chainsaw Massacre movies before. I hope we're going to get a good movie out of them. Thanks for watching ML Miller Frights. If you dug this video, give it a like down below and share it with your pals on social media. And don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell for notifications so you don't miss an episode. Thanks again, and please take care. Stuck inside your reality You're doomed Oh, you're doomed You're doomed Yeah.